I'm Mitch Marks and I'm going to be speaking today about efficiency mapping for electric motors and why it potentially takes so much time. Now when you're developing an electric vehicle you want it to go as far as possible and the obvious limitation is battery capacity. So one thing we can do to maximize that range is to increase the efficiency of each of our individual components. Now in order to do this we need to characterize our components. So we're going to take our powertrain, our battery, our inverter, and our motor, and we're going to put them on a dynamometer. And on this dynamometer, we're going to sit, set a number of set points. So we're going to fix a torque and a speed for the full range of the powertrain and measure the efficiency at each point. So we're going to measure that battery power, P in. We're going to measure that inverter power, PAC. And we're going to measure that motor power, PMEC. And from this, we're going to determine our efficiencies. So our inverter efficiency and our motor efficiency. And we want to figure out what those most efficient points are so we can operate there a majority of our time. Now when we're doing this, we're going to do an efficiency map. In this efficiency map, we're going to have speed down here, we're going to have torque over here, and we're going to set every point that the motor could possibly operate at. And this can start to add up to be a significant number of points because the electric motor can operate in a really wide range. And as we set all these points, and as we take all these measurements, we can really understand the operation of that machine and start to make decisions on how to operate that motor inverter for a given battery. Now, okay, you might say, here's this map. Maybe it's 100, 200, 400 points if we're really detailed. That can't take all that much time. But okay, we have to consider we're gonna make a map for each different gear state if it's a hybrid. We're gonna make a map for each different temperature state because the efficiency of the motor and inverter are gonna change at different environmental temperatures. Also, we have to consider that this battery might have a different state of charge. It might have a different capacity to it. And we might need to operate the equipment differently at different states of charge. So we need to start to characterize all of these different scenarios. And this starts to add up because a vehicle lives in the real world. Now let's take an example. Let's say in our vehicle, our efficiency map is 200 points. Seems reasonable. We have 10 different temperatures that we're concerned with. So we have 10 different thermal regions that have different efficiency maps. Now this is gonna be a hybrid, so we're gonna have five gear states. So we need to understand the 10 temperatures for each gear state. And we're gonna have five different states of charge. So five different battery states. And again, we need to understand each of these scenarios. So we're gonna have 250 maps, each with 200 points. I think you guys see where I'm going with this. This is 50,000 points. Okay, 50,000 points, that's not all that crazy. Now let's consider with, with power analyzers that were intended for the grid, you know, 50, 60 hertz fixed, each one of these set points is potentially gonna take 10 seconds because they need to settle on it. That's 500,000 seconds. 500,000 seconds is equivalent to 139 hours which is approximately one working week, if we consider a working week to be five days. Now that's if everything goes perfect. That's not considering transition times of the dynamometer. That's not considering downtime of the dynamometer. And that's not considering that for every second this test is running, we're heating up and cooling, heating up and therefore needing to cool down to keep that motor in that specific temperature range. This is a lot of time. This means motor calibration, understanding all these efficiency maps so we can make those decisions to maximize our range can take a significant amount of time. Now what if we look at a different scenario? What if this only took one second per point? That's a significant time savings. Now we're looking at 13.9 hours, about half a day, maybe two shifts. This could really be a game changer over that if we could just measure each point 10 times more quickly. Okay, how is this possible? Well, if we look at modern technologies, um, HBK offers a product called eDrive, 
where we use a system called Cycle Detect for determining the frequency and therefore taking the power measurement. So now what, what would this work? How do we get that one second time period? So if we have our fundamental frequency, this is coming out of our inverter to power our motor. Rather than waiting a long period of time to settle on a frequency, we use digital algorithms to look at zero crossings in the real time. And from here, we can take power efficiency measurements every half cycle. So if your machine is spinning more quickly, you can take these measurements extremely fast. And one second will give you a very, very stable measurement. And this is very exciting because if we can start to cut that 10 seconds down to one second or less, we can start to characterize our machines and accomplish our goals of increasing the range of the vehicle much more quickly. We can get our product to market much more quickly. Now the eDrive system, outside of cycle detect and significant time savings, cutting that one second or 10 seconds down to one, we also have some really nice features that can save you time as well. One of them is data. We store the data for each and every single measurement point. This means if something goes wrong, you don't need to rerun that test that potentially takes 13 hours. You can go back to data, review, figure out what went wrong, and revise it. You can spend less time testing and more time determining what the best solution is. Secondly, we have some really nice integration tools so that you can feed back information to your dynamometer and move through your set points extremely quickly, cutting down some of that transition time. And, and, and in closing, we're going to take that weeks and we're going to make that days. Thank you for your time.